Hello students. So today we are going to continue with the second part of uh, lesson simple machines. Unit 3 part 2 simple machines and this part is about livers. What is a liver? A liver is a rigid straight or bent bar which is capable of turning about a fixed point or an axis commonly called its fulcrum. A liver is a straight bar or it can be a bent road and which is capable of turning about a point and that point at which it is able to turn is called a fulcrum and on one end of the road we can keep a load and we can exert effort on the other end to lift the load and this is simply a liver principle of a liver the liver works on a principle so as we learned earlier a liver is a long road and it has a fulcrum and here in this case we are drawing the fulcrum at the center of the liver and on one end here the left side the load is pushing the road downwards and on the other side we are giving the effort in the downward direction and the distance of effort to the fulcrum this perpendicular distance is called effort arm the perpendicular distance of the effort from the fulcrum is called the effort arm the distance of load from the fulcrum is called load arm the perpendicular distance of the load from the fulcrum is called the load arm so continuing with this principle here I have interchanged the positions of load and effort now the load is on the right side earlier load was on the left this load is making this lever turn in the clockwise direction and you should know what is clockwise direction and we know that the arms of the clock turns in this direction so this direction is called the clockwise direction and the direction opposite to that is called the anti-clockwise direction so here the load is making this lever to rotate in the clockwise direction and the effort is making the lever to turn in the anti-clockwise direction that is opposite to the direction in which the clock is turning so here an ideal lever works on the principle of moments so do you remember about moments moments is a term which we studied in chapter 1 and the moment of force it can be determined by multiplying force and distance if you multiply force and distance we get moment of force keep that in mind second one the lever is in equilibrium in position so equilibrium means the effort and the load is not moving the lever the effort and the load are balancing each other and here in this case when they are in equilibrium we are assuming that the lever is weightless that means this road is weightless and also the friction is neglected there could be some friction between the fulcrum and the road that friction also is neglected okay our conditions are here so first this the lever works on the principle of moments and the liver is in equilibrium that is load and effort are not moving and we are assuming that the liver is weightless friction is also neglected in that case clockwise moments of load about the fulcrum the clockwise moments of the load about the fulcrum should be equal to anti-clockwise moments of effort about the fulcrum anti-clockwise moments of effort about the fulcrum so we know that moments is equal to force into distance 
so we can write this principle as load into load arm is equal to effort into effort arm so moments of load or moment of load is equal to the magnitude of load into distance of fulcrum from the load that is load arm moment of effort is effort into effort arm and this is the principle of lever okay now continuing on that load into load arm is equal to effort into effort arm we can take up this low effort and write it under the load and we can write the load arm under the effort arm and the equation becomes load by effort is equal to effort arm by load arm we already learned about load by effort load by effort is equal to mechanical advantage so that we can now rewrite this equation as mechanical advantage is equal to effort arm by load arm so what is the mechanical advantage of a lever the formula of mechanical advantage of a lever is effort arm by load arm this relation is known as the law of lever this relation is known as the law of lever mechanical advantage of a lever is equal to ratio of the length of the effort arm to the length of the load arm so based on this relation ma is equal to effort arm by load arm we can find out whether the given lever is a force multiplier speed multiplier or helps in change of direction so these are the three main functions a lever can do a lever can act as a force multiplier a lever can act as speed multiplier or lever can help in changing the direction of action of force so we'll study in detail about these three effects force multiplier speed multiplier or change in direction so here we can see the picture of a lever the load is on the left side effort is on the right side we have load arm uh, load arm the distance from fulcrum to the load and we have effort arm the distance of effort from the fulcrum what happens now is we can move the fulcrum a little towards the left or towards the load now the effort arm is bigger than the load arm the effort arm is greater than the load arm look effort arm is longer than the load arm in such a case if effort arm is longer than the load arm when we find mechanical advantage which is effort arm divided by load arm its value will always be greater than 1 its value will always be greater than 1 effort arm if it is 100 and the load arm is a small value of maybe 50 let it be an example 50 then your answer will be 2 which is more than 1 that means if the effort arm is longer then mechanical advantage is greater than 1 and the lever is acting as a force multiplier we we'll look at the example nutcracker and plier a plier is a device which can exert heavy force it has long arms and short front ends it can exert heavy force and effort arm of the plier is longer than the load arm and therefore it act as a force multiplier let's consider another situation where the fulcrum is more towards the effort so in such a case effort arm is now less than the load arm effort arm's length is less compared to the load effort arm is small on the right and load arm is big so now when you divide 
uh, effort arm by load arm to find mechanical advantage we always get a value which is less than 1 so here it is not acting as a force multiplier but the lever is acting as a speed multiplier being a force multiplier or being a speed multiplier depends on the length of the effort arm compared to the length of the load arm if effort arm is more the amount of effort needed is less if effort arm is long the amount of effort needed is less if load arm is long the amount of effort needed will be long examples of speed multipliers are scissors scissors have long load arm and a small effort arm fire tongs longer load arm and small effort arm human forearm our arms are also examples of speed multipliers now comes the third function of a lever that is in the case of load arm is equal to effort arm the fulcrum is in between the load and effort so that distance of load from the fulcrum will be equal to the distance of effort from the fulcrum in such a case we get mechanical advantage is equal to 1 so it is not a force multiplier and not a speed multiplier but it is used for changing the direction example a seesaw when two children play in a seesaw speed is not multiplied force is not multiplied but since the ends of the seesaw are at equal distance from the fulcrum they help in changing the direction when one boy goes up the other boy will come down now we'll go into the topic of types of levers earlier we learned about functions of liver and the most important function being a force multiplier and now we are going into types of levers levers are divided into three classes class 1 class 2 and class 3 in a class 1 liver we have fulcrum in the middle in class 2 liver we have load in the middle and in class 3 liver we have effort in the middle okay so in the case of class 1 as we discussed in the previous slide the load arm and effort arm can be of equal length so that it will act as a, a device for changing direction or it can move its fulcrum towards the load making the effort arm longer if the effort arm is longer then it can act as a force multiplier and class 1 liver can move its fulcrum towards the effort making the load arm lower and in such a case it act as a speed multiplier listen carefully class 1 liver can act as force multiplier speed multiplier and for changing the direction when it comes to class 2 levers class 2 liver has its load in the center that means distance from fulcrum to load will always be less than distance of effort to fulcrum so effort arm is always longer in class 2 liver so class 2 liver is used as a force multiplier why a class 2 liver is used as a force multiplier its effort arm is always longer than its load arm so remember students class 2 livers are force multiplier when it comes to class 3 liver you can clearly see that effort is in the middle and effort arm therefore will always be smaller than the load arm 
and class 3 levers are used as speed multipliers so class 1 lever can act as speed multiplier force multiplier and also can help in change in direction class 2 lever is used generally as a force multiplier and class 3 lever is used as a speed multiplier we look into some of the examples of three different classes of livers so class 1 lever a list of uh, examples are scissors you have seen scissors which have its fulcrum at its center pliers have its fulcrum at its center seesaw has its fulcrum at its center water pump common balance claw hammer crowbar they all have its fulcrum at its center and effort and load can be on its either side so pictures of these uh, levers are very important uh, you have to see the picture and you have to draw it in your book you have to the scissors seesaw common balance crowbar these are important pictures to be drawn and studied i have attached a file of pictures along with this video so please uh, check it after finishing this class 2 levers examples are nutcracker wheelbarrow bottle opener lemon crusher mango cutter and remember they all have their load in the center the nutcracker we keep the nut in between the fulcrum and the effort in a wheelbarrow wheelbarrow is a uh, small device which workers in construction site use to carry things around they push the wheelbarrow around the load is in the center uh, generally a wheel which is in the front act as fulcrum and the handles which the worker is holding will act as a point of effort you can uh, easily understand that when you look at the picture and class 3 liver examples include fire tongs bread knife fishing rod tweezers and human forearm fire tongs are used to take uh, coal from the fire a knife a knife is an example of class 3 liver remember knife is an example of a class 3 liver one end of the knife is in our palm which act as the fulcrum other end the load will be cut and in the middle we apply the effort uh, tweezers are a little tong like things which we use to take things small things our forearm human forearm our forearm is also acting as a liver which we will discuss in detail in the next slide and also livers are found in human body class 1 liver there are different types of livers found in the human body and the best example for a class 1 liver is the working of a head here you can see human skull is balanced by the vertebral column which act as the fulcrum and the heavy part of a head is in the friend which act as the load and the muscles here which pulls the back part of the head downward is where we give the effort so as it is given in this picture fulcrum is in the center load is on one side and the effort is on the other side therefore human head act as a example for class 1 liver so muscles exert force by contraction in human body so for relaxing muscles do not exert any force only the contraction here the muscles are contracting and pulling it downwards okay then class 2 liver example is our foot when we stand on the toes of our feet here when you stand on the toes of your feet the calf muscles here the calf muscles will contract to pull up the ankle so these calf muscles are pulling the ankle upward in the upward direction to lift our leg so the load is our body weight which is acting downwards through the center 
the fulcrum is in our toes and the effort is given at the ankle effort is given at the ankle since the load is in the middle our foot when we stand on our toes is an example for class 2 liver okay class 3 liver is our forearm it's our human forearm this is our muscle in our arms so here when we take things in our hands our forearm act as the load and this elbow is acting as the fulcrum here and the effort is given by this biceps muscle and this bicep muscle is pulling in the upward direction here so effort is in the center fulcrum is on one end and the load is on the other end this human forearm acts as a class 3 liver thus we end the theory part of the liver now we can look into two examples of numericals if the fulcrum of a crowbar of total length 150 centimeter is at a distance of 25 centimeter from the load what is the mechanical advantage of the crowbar fulcrum is at a distance of 25 centimeter from the load total length is 150 so when you draw the picture fulcrum in the middle total length of the liver is 150 centimeter and it is written uh, fulcrum is at a distance of 25 centimeter from the load that also we will mark we are asked to find mechanical advantage to find mechanical advantage so we will first write down what all things we have we have load arm which is 25 centimeter we have effort arm which we calculated by subtracting the the load arm from the total length of the liver which we get as 125 centimeter and the formula for mechanical advantage of a liver is effort arm by load arm that is 125 centimeter by 25 centimeter and that gives us the answer 5 which does not have a unit since mechanical advantage is a ratio okay second question second question a man uses a 2.5 meter long crowbar to raise a 100 kg mass or a weight of 1000 newton as shown in the figure find a the effort needed to lift the load and b the mechanical advantage of the crowbar so figure is given for you the load is 1000 newton and the load arm is 0.5 meter the effort arm is 2 meter and therefore the total length of the liver is 2.5 meter we are asked to find effort and we are asked to find ma so effort can be found by principle of liver so first we will write the things which we have here solution load we have 1000 newton load arm 0.5 and effort we have 2 so we will take the principle of liver according to the principle of liver effort into effort arm is equal to load into load arm therefore when we substitute the values we get e into 2 is equal to 1000 into 0.5 by solving it we get effort is equal to 1000 into 0.5 by 2 meter and we get effort is equal to 250 newton so we got the first answer that is effort for the second part mechanical advantage the formula is load by effort mechanical advantage is load by effort or we can also use the formula of effort arm divided by load arm effort arm divided by load arm so here we are taking the formula of load by effort what is the load here thousand how much is the effort we calculated 250 1000 by 250 that is 4 
if you take the other formula of effort arm by load arm then effort arm in the figure is 2 meter and the load arm is 0 0.5 meter in that case also when you divide you will get the answer as 4 so you can use this formula or this formula to find mechanical advantage so students I hope you got this topic clearly and now you have to look at the diagrams given in that folder I also check the PDF of this slide and also you can go through the questions and start answering them thank you all have a nice day